This lovely manhwa is titled, I Got Married to a Duke Called Beast. If you love stories like this, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you'll never miss the next episode. Nadia couldn't believe she was about to become a bride. Not just any bride, but the bride of the infamous Duke Luke, a man known for his wealth and prestige, but also for the ugly rumors surrounding him. Duke Station was a beast without blood or tears, and today she became his bride. As she stood in the Duke's mansion, a maid announced, Ma'am, His Highness the Duke has come to see you. Nadia's heart raced with fear, thinking, What should I do? I'm afraid that my body will tremble. If I faint on the first night, it will be a great insult. Still thinking, she wondered why a man like him would propose to her, a woman from a baron's family. She and her family never wished for this. Her brother couldn't even imagine her getting married to the Duke, but there was no other option as it seems. There would have been a fighting chance if Nadia already had a fiancé from another Duke's family. Nadia thought of the rumors she had heard. Her groom was a beast, more than two meters tall, eating kids. At least she could have looked at him properly, but she was too nervous to even make eye contact, fidgeting, wondering what she would say when he entered the room. She heard footsteps. He really came in, in the same room. Stay calm, stay calm, she said to herself. She couldn't refuse the marriage proposal. She already had nowhere to run to. As he made his way into the room, she couldn't see his face as it was dark and her mind raced with rumors of his heightened looks. Ah, ah, beast, she screamed, hiccuping unexpectedly. Oh no, she exclaimed, thinking of what she could do to stop the hiccup. Nadia was anxious, trying to predict the outcome of her unexpected actions, already concluding that he'd blame it all on her parents by saying that their education is the problem. Lamenting on why she should have hiccups on her first night, she was so concentrated on what would follow after this humiliating act she didn't hear Duke Luke telling her to look behind her. Behind, behind you, the Duke said, seeing that Nadia was not moving an inch from where she was standing, he held her by the waist, pulling her closer to him, saving her from the falling wine bottle that almost hit her from behind. Ha! Nadia shouted. The Duke's actions shocked her. The maids who were busy with their chores stopped as they heard Nadia scream. Mr. Allen, they chorused, also getting the attention of Jade Allen, the station palace butler. What was that? Mr. Allen thought the Duchess's screams came from the room. Moving towards the door, he knocked on the door and called out, Your Highness, this is me, Jade. Receiving no response, he knocked again. Your Highness, what are you doing inside? Can I come in? He asked, still receiving no response. He opened the door, looking inside. Duke, are you making your bride faint from your first day? He asked the Duke, seeing that Nadia was passed out in the arms of Duke Luke. It's not because of me, he said, placing the Duchess on the bed. He urged them to go out and talk. I understand the situation of the Duchess, he said to the Duke, getting married to a man whom she's only ever heard of. And since the opponent was the Grand Duke, there must have been a lot of pressure on her. I never tried to scare her, the Duke raised his voice, wanting to clear what happened between him and Nadia in the room. But remembering her face when he held her, he lowered his voice. I did not scare her he murmured, trying to convince himself. Am I that scary? He asked Jade. Speaking about the Duke, he hadn't always been like this. He wasn't born that way. Circumstances led him to become the person he is now. His mother, the Duchess, was kidnapped by rebels and his father, Duke Station, tried to save her, resulting in both of their deaths. Left alone at a very young age, he was taken care of by his grandfather, who instilled in him the idea that to avoid weakness, he had to become a monster. Duke, are you asking me if you are scary? Jade asked the Duke. And feel free to answer honestly, the Duke said. Answering the said question from the Duke, Jade said, From my point of view, your highness, surely you look like a bear standing on its feet. A bear standing on its feet? The Duke exclaimed, surprised by the comparison. Hey, didn't you say feel free to answer honestly? Still adding to his comment that the Duke didn't just look like a bear, looked like a wild animal. Don't overdo it the Duke said to Jade. He didn't want or know what others thought about him. He didn't just don't want or be seen as a monster by his wife. What a mess. I've never felt this anxious before and I can't help him either, Jade thought to himself, feeling the weight of the situation. However, considering his popularity with the opposite sex, he resolved to aid the Duke. Let me help you, your highness. Maybe there's a solution? Jade said to go to the Duke. Let me ask you a few questions, he continued. 
Well, wouldn't it have been possible for you to have at least some interaction before you proposed to her? Jade asked, trying to gauge the Duke's understanding of his wife's perspective. The Duke, visibly unsure, remained silent. Sensing his discomfort, Jade decided to lower the intensity of his inquiries. You know her name, right? He asked again, thinking that this was the lowest level he could reach. Nadia, Nadia Masha, station, he commented. Have you married someone you've never had a relationship with before? Isn't that kidnapping? He asked him, trying to get the Duke to understand the Duchess's position. There was no time. I couldn't stay in the capital for a long time, he responded. Jade made the Duke understand she will continue to faint for every time they meet if he continued to stay distant from her. He advised him to start slow, like inviting her to dinner, but first he would have to cut his hair, get her gifts, and also talk to her in a friendly way, which would definitely make her open up to him. To have dinner with Nadia, the Duke thought, breaking his thought, Jade asked Bike if he was going to prepare like this. Well, let's look for a good barber first. Thinking about it now, he actually felt sorry for Nadia. He didn't expect to be accepted as soon as he proposed to her, but remembering that Leonard said he should do it, he shouldn't have listened to Leonard. The Duke could remember three months ago when he met Leonard. Leonard Madria, the crown prince of the empire. Are you a monster? Luke asked Leonard as they sat down together to discuss. This is really rude, but maybe the alcohol is a little strong. He responded, commenting on his looks. We were very nice when we grew up in the capital, and once you went to the duchy, you became a completely different person, Leonard said to him, wanting to know if he had any intention of coming back here to the capital. The place I will return to is only the duchy. Please let me go now, there's nothing to do here anyway, right? Luke asked, requesting to leave. If you come back, you won't get back in touch with me again, right? Leonard asked him. Luke responded by telling him that all he had to do was to regularly attend the National Foundation Day of the Duchy. Don't you want to even celebrate my birthday? He asked again. Although they were friends, it was obvious Duke Luke didn't appreciate his presence that much. This is a terrible mistake, he thought. He knew he couldn't say no to the prince, even though he had never offered his personal loyalty, because as a vassal duke of the empire, he already serves the empire against his will. Also, the prince Leonard always used their relationship, which according to him was weird to annoy him. I have no intention of staying in the capital, he said to Leonard. Why the hell can't you stay? Leonard asked. To Leonard, the duchy was rich, yes, but it was not as good as the capital. There were many things he could enjoy here. I'm not interested, Luke responded. Don't you get bored? You've been such in the countryside since you were young. Don't you even think about getting married? He asked. Luke paused, reminding him that he too was supposed to get married. I will get married sooner or later. I can even get married at any time, he told Luke. There's just no one catching my attention right now, he continued. But you have no reason not to do this. Are you really afraid of getting married? Is this because of your parents? He asked, clearly touching a sour topic for the Duke, your highness. Even if you don't apply such pressure, Duchy Station would never disobey the Imperial family. The Duchy remains merely a fiefdom of the Empire, and will also respond to the royal family's call at any time. Don't worry. Station is not threatening the royal family in any way, so please stop calling me here to check my loyalty, Luke said to Leonard as he walked away from him. Luke thought about it and ended up pointing out some things he didn't need to say. The capital, Lamon strode, is a place as fragile as a flower. Luke thought as he went down memory lane of the times he had been in the capital. At the banquet every night, his senses would become dull. Looking at the nobles, he didn't even match their minimum. He didn't want to stay here for too long. If he did, he might lose his mind. Now walking through a garden, the alcohol he took during his conversation with Prince Leonard began to take effect. Ah! he exclaimed, holding his head. Deciding not to think about anything anymore, he lay down on the lawn in the garden. Kaya Kia, save me! A bear has appeared in the garden. Suddenly, a scream pierced the tranquility of the garden. What is this now? Luke thought. That if someone reported this, he might be forced to reveal his identity. Making a move to get up from where he was, heard a voice. Excuse me, are you okay? asked the stranger who just walked up to him. I've been watching you for a while. You fell on the ground and did not get up, she said. Do you need help? Nadia asked. But the Duke looked at her let alone answer. As the sunlight reflected off Nadia's golden hair, causing a glare. 
Oh my God, you really need help, Nadia continued as the Duke moved to cover his face with a cloak. Shall I call the doctor? She asked Luke. Stop, Nadia, her sister persuaded her. Please, let's just go, okay? Clearly not liking the situation at hand. How can I do that? I can't leave him like this carelessly. He needs help, she explained, not accepting the fact that they would have to leave without helping the stranger. Why can't you just leave me? Luke thought. In this racist city, I never thought I'd find someone so nice. I'll stay by this person's side, she said to her sister, pleading with her to go call a doctor. Meanwhile, Luke was already uncomfortable with the fact that they were beginning to draw attention to themselves. The people coming close to know what was going on saw that it wasn't a bear, but rather a man who they thought was sick. Luke, who was still dazed, thought of the embarrassment this could bring to Staten, and he rose slowly. Please be patient, my sister went to call the doctor, Nadia said to Luke as he was about to get up. You'll be able to get tested soon. I'm absolutely fine, Luke replied, trying to convince this stranger that he was good, so she could leave him. But you sweat too much. Nadia commented. This, this is not a big deal, Luke responded. Still insisting that he stay back to wait for the doctor, she offered her napkin. Is she an angel? Luke thought, contemplating if he should accept the napkin or not. Reaching out to get the napkin, their hands touched. Wait, our hands touched, he thought as he started walking away from the scene. Sir, where are you going? Nadia asked. Hearing the way Nadia called him sir was quite shocking to him. Wait a moment, you shouldn't exaggerate, sir, she said, running after him to persuade him to stay as she saw that he too had started to run. Successfully getting away from Nadia, he began to think of her, think of the many things people had said concerning him, but she, she was different, even her sweet voice, he thought. Looking at the handkerchief with the embroidery on it, he was sure this was her favorite handkerchief, but she gave it to him. The difference between her and the other persons he had met before in the capital was very clear. Her goodness was sincere. He wondered what was wrong with him as he kept on thinking of Nadia. And the more he thought of her, the more his heart trembled. Looking down at the handkerchief, he saw letters spelling out a name. Is this her name? He thought. He wanted to meet her again. Maybe I should go to the park. When I find her, I will reveal my identity, he thought, not knowing what to do. Luke, why did you come here at night? Prince Leonard asked as soon as he saw Luke. He was curious as to what brought him here, especially directly to the Imperial Palace. He could vividly remember that three days ago he resolutely left. Satisfying the curiosity of the prince, he told the prince why he was there. Are you good at dealing with women? Well, more than you'd expect, the prince responded jokingly. The next question Luke asked clearly shocked the prince. When you find someone you love, what should you do then? He asked. I think I heard wrong, the prince replied, not finding it funny that the prince was not taking him seriously. He asked again in a voice much louder than before, when you find a woman you love, what should you do? Realizing he didn't hear wrong, he turned to Luke asking who the woman was. Luke told him of his encounter with her. In fact, I only know her name. She misunderstood me as a vagabond, he told the prince. She is a woman like an angel. I think it was love at first sight, he concluded. The prince burst out laughing. Are you done laughing? Luke asked. No, not yet, he replied. I told you I'm serious, shouted Luke. Tell me, please, what should I do now? What should I do to meet her again, and what should I do after we meet? Don't you even know that, the prince asked, reminding the prince that he had been training to fight all his life. Of course, there was no way he could know that. I lived in a unit and only knew the soldiers, he shouted. So I have no choice. I'll help you, he said to Luke. But I want to know what you want to do with that woman. Hesitating to answer the question, the prince asked if it would be fun if he met her again, or if he wanted a good relationship. Of course it would be great if we could continue a good relationship, replying to Luke's response. He told him that there was only one thing that he needed to do, propose marriage to her. Why don't you want to get married? The prince asked, looking at the shocked face of the duke. You love women, but you don't want to take the responsibility. Well, I seem to be a playful person, unlike what you seem to be. I was just surprised she doesn't even know who I am, the Duke explained to the Prince. As you said, she was an angel. If she is a really beautiful woman, she might already have a partner, the Prince said to Luke. If you propose and get approval, you can start dating. If she refuses, it means she already has a partner. 
Urging him to go on with the proposal, even if he gets rejected, it's a way for him to at least start up a conversation. As he stood watching the prince, different thoughts raced through his mind. Three months later at the Staten Mansion, the Duke, who was all by himself, thought of what the prince meant by his challenge, wondering why he even listened to him, happy that the marriage between him and his new bride Nadia had happened quickly, but if she was unhappy, what was the point of everything? Anna, how is Nadia's condition? He asked the head of maids, who was just about to enter his wife's room. Duke, she responded, I think you should enter here immediately. Your wife's fever is getting worse, and she hadn't been able to wake up for a whole day already. Ah, your highness. The doctor greeted his highness as he entered the room. How's my wife doing? The duke asked. She's not in a good condition, the doctor replied. Let's see what will happen tomorrow explaining to the Duke that the cause for her illness might have been the long travel from the capital to the duchy, which might have put pressure on her body. It's definitely my fault too, he thought. Will she always get nervous next to me? He thought to himself, apologizing silently to the unconscious Nadia. As Nadia began to regain consciousness, she sensed someone tending to her but couldn't discern who it was. In her semi-conscious state, she imagined it might be her family. Upon opening her eyes, she was startled to see the Duke. Ah, a bear! Ah, it's a monster! She cried out, alarming her maids of honor who rushed to her side. Toppling off the bed in her fright, she fully regained awareness and realized it was a false alarm. Duchess, we heard a scream from your room! Cindy, one of the maids, said. Was there someone threatening you? Windy, the other maid asked almost immediately. No, no, Nadia exclaimed. I just fell off the bed while I was dreaming. Oh, should we prepare your meal? Do you need anything else? asked Wendy. At this point, Nadia just wished that they leave the room. She's been here for over a month now and she wondered if this was how a duchess lives. Such generous hospitality from the very first night. Things were a mess. They still served her the most delicious food every day. They also cared much about her. However, to her, it was like a prison. She hadn't seen the Duke for a month and waking up this morning, her ring was missing. Is he planning something bad? she thought, thinking of the time she passed out on seeing him on their first night. Maybe she was mad. Sitting at the table where she was served, Nadia couldn't eat as she was still worried about the Duke. The maid, noticing that she wasn't eating anything, asked, Ma'am, is there anything that worries you? Ah, uh, nothing, Nadia replied, asking about the whereabouts of the Duke. Oh, he's in the office. Should I call him? No, no, please don't do that, Nadia replied, fear racing through her thoughts. She couldn't meet the Duke. She couldn't face him after that mistake on their first night. It made her so nervous. She thought if it would be better to write a letter to her parents asking them to apologize to the Duke, but that might fail the marriage. Leaving behind the maid, she walked around the mansion, passing by Jade, the palace butler. Encountering Jade, the palace butler, as she roamed the mansion alone, Nadia concocted an excuse about writing a letter to a friend. I'm just going to write a letter to my friend and so I left the maids behind. There are lots of rooms in this place so I lost my way. Alan, not aware of what to do but knew that it would be dangerous for her to be alone, thought if it was best to send her back to her room. But clearly remembering that the Duke said Nadia should be given whatever she wants, he asked, Ma'am, if you don't mind, maybe I can help you find the room you're looking for. Seated in the library, he looked at the Duchess, feeling that she wasn't comfortable, not knowing what to do in this situation, he called out, Ma'am. Yes, Nadia replied. Why did you leave the maids behind? Jade asked. Nadia was lost for words on how to reply to his question. Jade could see the hesitation and added that it wasn't really important that she should answer. He just wanted to know if there was something that worried her. Calm down, please, he said. His Highness asked me to take personal care of you. The Duke? Nadia asked, clearly surprised by what Jade said. Yes, Jade replied. Do you feel pain or sick? He asked her, making her understand that the Duke had her well-being at heart. What? Why isn't he angry with me? Nadia thought, confused, clearly not expecting the conversation to take this turn. She hadn't seen him for a month, so she came to a conclusion he was angry with her. Or was he a more compassionate person than she thought? Really thinking about it, the only thing that scared her was his appearance. By the way, ma'am, what do you think of the Duke's visit? Jade asked breaking Nadia's thoughts. She couldn't tell as she touched her finger where her ring was missing. Feeling that the Duchess might have misinterpreted the reason why her ring was missing, Alan informed that a new ring had arrived and the old ring was taken 
when the Duke found out that she had sensitive hands. What kind of person is the Duke? Nadia thought, I have no idea what he's even thinking. But I'm an adult now too, she said to herself, thinking if she could just escape from here, dismissing the thought and getting up from her seat. Ma'am, Jade called out, seeing that the Duchess had gotten up from her seat. Jade, I must do as you told me. Can you guide me to the Duke's room? In Luke's room, he pondered the recent conversation with Jaden, questioning the importance of rushing into things. Was it really important for us to talk first? He thought. Isn't it foolish to rush blindly like this? Thinking to himself that he should have more information about Nadia in order to execute this plan properly. Damn it, he shouted, hitting the table, attracting the attention of his maid, Anna. Your fist is stronger than a rock. How amazing. At this rate, you will destroy the mansion and have to build a new one, Anna remarked. This is a serious matter, Luke said, asking Anna when Jade would bring the barber he mentioned. We can't just call for anyone. Don't you feel your patience running out lately, she asked. Well, if he doesn't come by tomorrow, I will shave it off myself. It's just a beard, not something dangerous. I will tear it apart and destroy it, he responded to her raised voice. I will call Jade and ask him about it. Just calm down, she said, trying to soothe his anger. I'll ask him myself, he said, moving out from where he was. Just get out of here. Luke couldn't help but think about what Anna said. It's true. I've been feeling more anxious as the days pass. It has already been a month since I left Nadia alone. Thinking about Nadia, he wondered if she would still be scared if she saw him once again, if she might pass out and fall helplessly. Jade's arrival interrupted his thoughts. Your Highness, are you asleep? It's me, Jade. Damn it, Jade, where were you? You said you would bring a skilled barber. How long will you make me wait? He shouted, not noticing Nadia with Jade. Oh, Nadia exclaimed, making her presence known. Excuse me, your highness, I, I'm i your wife, your highness, I'm Nadia. Realizing that Nadia was present, he became calm. Wow, this room is completely different from the one I sleep in. Doesn't it seem a little simple, she said. As Jade left the room, Luke turned to her. Nadia, I know that this is not a comfortable room, but let's sit and talk, he said. No, it's okay to talk, we must talk, she replied. I'm really nervous now, she thought to herself as she sat down. What should I do? What should I say first? Would you like a drink, Nadia? Luke said before she could say anything. Maybe it's too strong for you, but it's all I have right now. Oh, thank you, Nadia replied. Sipping on the drink, her countenance changed. The look on her face made the Duke think that she didn't like it. Ha, ah, Nadia, he called out. I will call someone immediately to bring you some water. Assuring him that it was okay, their conversation continued. Your Highness, I came here because I wanted to talk to you directly. I was supposed to meet you a long time ago, but I just couldn't. I wanted to apologize for what I did that day, she said, bringing up the conversation of what happened on their first night. The Duke assured her that she didn't have to apologize, but she didn't understand why. But I passed out on our first night, so you have the right to get angry, she said to him, explaining to him that all the time that she had been preparing for the wedding, she was nervous because she was meeting a lot of guests, that he wasn't the reason she fainted and that she wasn't afraid of him at all. I apologize, don't be angry, please, she said. To be honest, I wasn't angry at all, Luke said, but Nadia couldn't believe what he said, seeing that he had refused to see her for a month now. So why did you refuse to see me, she asked, seeing that his abstinence from her had caused a misunderstanding. He wondered how he was going to fix this issue. I knew it, the Duke doesn't love me. Nadia thought, requesting the Duke should be honest with her and let her know if he didn't want to see her because he hated her. That's not true. I won't hate you no matter what you do, Luke said, shocked that she would think of such a thing. Nadia still couldn't understand why he stayed away from her. But as your new bride, I did nothing but act strange, she said. Your Highness, do you regret this marriage? Everyone said that your highness doesn't care who the bride is because she just wanted to get married. So it seemed like you chose someone and proposed to her only to get married. That's not true, Nadia, because I really want you. I only wanted to marry you, he said, kneeling before her. So I am really your wife, Nadia commented. You said you weren't angry, she continued. And also, since there was nothing to apologize for, why did you do that? I always imagined that you would ask for a divorce she said, now in tears. Divorce? No, 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 I don't want a divorce. Explaining the reason why he stayed away from her, Luke said to her, Nadia, I always felt like you were afraid of me, so I wanted to give you enough time to get used to me. 
I didn't even think about divorce, and I wasn't even angry about you. If there's anyone who should be apologizing, it's me, he said, caressing her face and wiping her tears. This touch was somewhat familiar, she thought, remembering that at one time she had dreamt about it. So it wasn't a dream, she thought, asking the Duke if he had been in her room before. I went there once when you were ill, he replied. I couldn't leave you alone while you were sick. I'm sorry if I was rude, he added, apologizing to Nadia. So this wasn't really a dream, Nadia thought. Taking care of me while I was sick and changing wet towels, it was the Duke who was by my side because I am his wife and he must take good care of me. Nadia, Luke broke her out of her thoughts. Yes, your highness, she replied. Please call me Luke, as you said. We are now married. Since the misunderstanding has been resolved, what about going back to your room? It's already late. Do I really have to go back to my room? Nadia asked. If we are really a couple, shouldn't we share the same bedroom too, she said, holding onto his hand. Shouldn't we share a bedroom too? She asked, wanting to say something else. Luke interrupted her. Hold on, Nadia. For the fact that I took your ring? Huh? Nadia was confused. Why are you talking about the ring now? Does this mean the end of our marriage? She asked, surprised. I bought you a new one, Luke told her. My wife's ring didn't fit her well. It seemed to bother you, he said as he brought out a new ring. Although it's very late, he continued. But if you're okay with it, will you accept it now, he asked. Giving him her hands, Luke put the ring on her fingers. Jade was right all along. He really cares about me, Nadia thought. I was afraid of him at first, but now I know for sure he's not the person who will hurt me. The wine she took during their conversation had begun to take effect on her body. Are you okay, Nadia? Luke asked. Yeah, I'm just... I think I'll be fine if I lay down for a while, Nadia responded as she laid down on the bed in Luke's room. Lay down in my bed, Luke thought. Luke, Nadia called out, breaking him out of his thought. Aren't you tired? She asked. Come sleep next to me. Nadia, just because we are married doesn't mean we need to share the same bed, he said, trying to persuade her to leave the room. But my parents were like that, she said to him. And also, it's unfamiliar to me here, so it's annoying to sleep alone. Nadia, Luke called. What do couples who sleep together do? Do you know anything? He asked. Nadia was naive. To her, sleeping on the bed was the only thing married couples did. What happens between couples? She asked. They sleep together, Luke said, believing she would understand now what he was saying. The... They hug each other while sleeping, Luke, she said, not really sure. Luke, are you okay? Your skin looks pale, she asked. Ah, uh, I'm fine. I just lost feeling in my legs. Seems like you are tired too, Luke. You'll feel better if you sleep next to me, she said, motioning for him to come lay on the bed. Thinking about just what happened, Luke couldn't believe he was having bad thoughts towards his innocent wife. Let's just be patient, he said. I have to endure it. The next morning, the... What? Where is he? Nadia, who just opened her eyes, thought as she couldn't find Luke. Rising up from the bed, she thought about Luke and how he hugged her, thinking about the fact that he asked her to call him by his name. My husband, she taught to herself. It's just one word. I can't believe that I feel embarrassed and happy at the same time because of that word. This made her think of her childhood days. Growing up, she had few people she was close to, her friend James and Anderson, she was the youngest of her family, which made them overly protective of her, making the sudden marriage quite a burden on them, which was really scary thinking back to. She thought on how much she had judged him based on his appearance, but now to her, he was more than that. Luke understood. He even apologized. His voice also was really nice, she thought. She was interrupted by a call from outside the room. Duchess, your meal is ready. Would you like to eat after washing up? Oh, yes, she responded. As they walked into the room with the food tray, she remembered how she tricked them and gone without them yesterday. Duchess, are you okay? Cindy, one of the maids, asked, breaking her out of her train of thoughts. Yeah, I feel refreshed and relaxed after a good night's rest, she responded. Duchess, why did you leave your room without telling us? I heard that you slept with the Duke last night, the other maid, Wendy, asked. I was about to go back to my room, sorry. But yes, I slept while hugging the Duke last night. Hearing her, both maids looked at her shocked. Actually, this place was unfamiliar, and I was a little scared. But thanks to the Duke, he makes me feel comfortable. Nadia explained to them the reason why she had to stay and sleep in the Duke's room. Did anything else happen? Wendy asked. 
Shutting Wendy's mouth, Cindy urged the Duchess to eat her food, to avoid it getting cold, glad that she had a good night's rest. The maids always treat me kindly, although I think it's really hard to do this all the time, but I really like this kind of treatment. Maybe I misunderstood them because I didn't have enough time to get to know them, she thought, already taking this place to be her home. Meanwhile, at the entrance in front of Luke's office. Jade, did anything happen today? You seem to be in a good mood, a voice said to Jade. Of course, Jade replied. That's why I brought you, Chief Baber. There's also good news in the area. Thinking about how the arrival of the Duchess was a gift from heaven, the maids were still lost for words as they couldn't believe that the Duke had already shared the same bed with the Duchess in just one month. Happy that the Duke had finally slept with his wife, all the while still wondering what happened, he walked into the Duke's office. Your Highness, this is me, Jade. How things have developed to this extent, you slept with your wife, he said with excitement. After all, isn't the Duke capable of doing that too? Your High... Unable to finish his sentence, the Duke interrupted him. You arrived at the right time. Now, follow me to the training ground right now. Suddenly, he asked, wondering why they should be heading to the training ground. The training ground? What are you talking about this morning? Today is a great day. Wasn't this an amazing initial integration between you two? Hearing from the Duke everything that had happened, Jade had to calm the Duke down before he said anything. All right, but calm down, Duke, he said. There's some good news. I finally found a barber, he told the Duke. A barber? The Duke asked, seeing as the chief barber brought to the mansion by Jade had already fainted. Requesting that Jade step aside, he walked past him. Duke, what are you trying to do? Jade asked. Don't worry, just get out of my way, replied the Duke, not willing to take no for an answer. He shouted after the Duke, Impossible, no matter how angry you are, you must calm down. Jade, Luke called him, stop looking for barbers. They won't even stand a chance against me. I don't need them. Your Highness, Jade shouted, shocked at the Duke's behavior as he walked out of the office with a blade in his hands. Duchess, it's bedtime now, her maid said to her as she was still busy with her embroidery. Oh no, it's fine. I won't delay my sleep because of that. I worked hard today to finish on time, she said. Going into the room and lying on the bed, she thought about Luke. He had not returned to the room for one week since she started sleeping there. Was I a burden to him? She asked herself, thinking about that very day, seeing as she was drunk. Maybe something happened that she couldn't remember. But was it really my fault, she thought? I'm sure Luke hugged me warmly and spoke to me sincerely, seen by her maids. Sister, I think the Duchess is sneaking out of her room. What should we do? One of the maids said. Let's see and wait, the other maid said. Maybe she's going to see the Duke. Sitting in his office, Luke thought if he should hide from Nadia. It's been a week already, he thought. I thought we became closer since the last time, but with this beard, I don't have the courage to stand in front of Nadia. Damn it, why didn't I listen to Jade? He was interrupted by the arrival of Nadia. Luke, are you inside? Nadia's voice asked from outside the office. I heard a loud noise from inside. Please wait a moment, he said to her. You can come in now, my lady, he said to her. Excuse me, Nadia said. He couldn't believe that Nadia came to his office. My lady, what brought you to my workplace tonight? He asked. I'm sorry for visiting you while you're working, but because I was feeling bored. Luke couldn't believe she actually came to visit him. Though bothered that maybe the Duke would feel she was a sulking child, she continued nonetheless. I love embroidery, but lately I've been embroidering all day. I even went for a walk and the time passed quickly, but for no reason. I don't know what to do either, she said taking a seat in the office. The Duke felt really ashamed that he failed to consider Nadia's situation when she was alone. Is there anything I can do? Nadia asked as she sat with the Duke in the office. She wanted to know what a duchess was supposed to do in a castle and also letting him know that her mother said to her that she should take responsibility for managing the castle. The Duke made Nadia understand that there was only one thing she should do in the castle, and that was for them to make decisions together. You are my wife, he said, and now your wishes are my wishes. She really couldn't believe what Luke said, appreciating him for what he said. She decided to tell him the real reason for coming to his office. I miss Luke so much, she stated. The Duke was shocked. Of course, he wasn't expecting that from Nadia. Lost in thoughts while looking at Nadia as she stood before him, he wondered why she was this thin. Luke, Nadia called out. He was bleeding. 
As he kept trying to assure her that he was fine, she came up to him only to see more scars on his face. Asking to know what happened to his face, the Duke had no choice but to let her know that he tried shaving his beard by himself, which led to the injury and scars, which therefore resulted in why he couldn't leave his office and see her for a whole week. The worried Nadia reached out to him and held his hands as she spoke to him, letting him understand that, to her, he was her husband and she was no longer scared. Of course, Nadia and Luke weren't the only ones in the mansion, so obviously everyone could see what was happening between them. It was now known to everyone in the mansion that the Duke had been acting strange for the past few days. Anna, the head maid, and Geranos, the leader of the Black Bear Knight, whispered to themselves about his strange behaviors, both from the way he fought with the knights and the noises that came from him. All of a sudden, a voice interrupted their discussion. Everyone, wait, you shouldn't go into the office. He told Anna and Geranos, the thing you have in your hand, please give it to me. Anna was certainly not going to give Jade what she held in her hands, but Jade would have none of it. He was adamant about the fact that he wouldn't let the Duke shave his own beard with his hands. Standing right before the Duke's office, they argued over whether the shaving tools should be given to the Duke or not. At the same time, the door to the Duke's office was opened, and just by looking at the scene before him, the Duke already knew that Jade was trying to stop the tools from getting to him. Jade, on the other hand, held on to the tools. He was in no way going to release them to the Duke. The Duke was getting tired of Jade's behavior, about to forcefully take the tools away from Jade by any means. Nadia walked in on them, giving thought to their position. She asked Luke if he was fighting with Jade. The mansion workers who had been there the whole time were shocked to see the Duchess, so was Jade. Finally calm, he explained to Jade that Nadia offered to help him with shaving his beards. At this point, Jade had no choice but to give him the tool, as he felt more at ease with the Duchess helping the Duke. As Jade thought about everything that had happened, he came to a conclusion that he was scared for nothing, as the relationship between the Duke and the Duchess was quite better than he expected. As Nadia helped the Duke shave his face, she remembered how she used to shave her father's and brother's beards at home. For her, it was just for fun. But with Luke, it felt more intimate, despite it being just a simple act. The look on everyone's face was priceless. Anna was surprised at how he looked so much like his father. It had been nine years since she saw his face. Nadia couldn't explain how she felt. She didn't expect the huge change. He wasn't Luke anymore, she thought. It wasn't that it was strange for her, it was just unfamiliar. She didn't know how to explain to Luke that it was okay. Hoping that Luke wouldn't think of it the wrong way, she kissed him on his cheek. Nadia, Luke exclaimed, clearly not expecting what had just happened. Overwhelmed with mixed feelings, he didn't have anyone to turn to except Anna, as Nadia had left the room almost immediately. For Luke, it was his first kiss with Nadia, and by his actions, it meant a lot to him. Anna was clearly shocked at the fact that since their marriage, there had been nothing of such going on between them. As Anna left the room, Jade walked up to her, wanting to know the outcome of the shaving, assuring Jade that it was fine and all sorted out. But they had another issue at hand. Gather your closest friends, she said to Jade. We need to hold an emergency meeting. It's about the Duke and his wife. Anna was worried that if things continued like this between the Duke and his wife, she might never see a heir, and she wasn't about to let that happen. Nadia was anxious that Luke was avoiding her on purpose, as she thought of what she could do to make sure they talked as a couple. She fell asleep while thinking, Nadia, aren't you eating too much? A voice said as Nadia was having a meal. The voice, which belonged to Reina, the daughter of Viscount Million, mocked Nadia as she ate, pointing out the fact that she was chubby without a fiancé and that she would marry a beast. It was a dream, Nadia thought as she woke up. She had fallen asleep waiting for Luke. Luke, who was already in the room, walked up to Nadia, who had just woken up from her sleep, asking her if she wasn't yet ready to sleep. Nadia had just woken up from sleep, so she wasn't feeling sleepy anymore. Deciding that they should eat, they left the room. As they ate, Nadia told Luke of the dream she had, which consisted of her friends. The Duke couldn't believe that Nadia had friends. It was strange. They should have at least been at the wedding. Your Excellence, no, Luke, do you like dessert? Her voice broke Luke out of his thought. The Duke wasn't really a fan of dessert, but for Nadia's sake, he was ready to like them. I like them so much, he commented. Can I go to the kitchen to make some if you don't mind? She asked Luke. Luke was so entranced by the beauty before him. So many things drew him to her. Her stature, her eyes, her lips, as he thought of what it would be like when they kissed. 
Wait a moment, he thought, standing up abruptly, causing the table to flip a little, resulting in food spilling all over Nadia. He couldn't believe that he was having such thoughts towards her again. It clearly showed how much he was in love with her. Nadia, on the other hand, thought the reason for his outburst was because she had been eating too much. He chided himself, immediately apologizing to Nadia that he didn't realize when he made such a mistake. I guess you were very busy today, Nadia asked, believing that she had been the one keeping him awake. She decided that they head to bed. Let's go to bed, Luke. Luke was lost for words. He didn't know what to do. Nevertheless, he still went to bed with her. As he lay down, his mind kept wandering on how he could best handle this situation. He succeeded in calming himself down after some minutes of meditation, which, by the way, didn't last long, as Nadia made a statement that he had to let her know if at any point she was annoying to him. Luke was surprised, but still, he let her know that she wasn't in any way annoying. If anything, she was buoyant. Nadia appreciated the fact that he saw her that way. While Nadia was still happy about the conversation that just happened, Luke had become on edge again. The garment Nadia was putting on wasn't helping his case either, as she shut his eyes, not wanting to look at her so as to help himself. How weird. I feel empty, Nadia thought, wondering if it was because it was the first time she had a partner. With all that she had learned from her parents, she felt that she would spend every night with Luke, as everyone she knew had no proper talk with her about having a partner or even marital life. There must be a reason she feels this way, she thought as she looked down at the sleeping Luke. Meanwhile, in the station mansion conference room, housekeeper, what you ordered has arrived, Jade said to Anna as she stared out the window of the conference room in thought. She turned to Jade, asking him some questions to confirm that what they ordered was what they got. Jade was still skeptical about this plan. He asked Anna if they would be able to show it to the Duchess. Anna reminded him that it wasn't something that could be helped, as they had already discussed this at the meeting they had. There was no other way to let the Duchess know this. Waking up the next morning, Nadia felt something warm and sturdy in her arms. As she blinked awake, she realized she was hugging Luke. What surprised her even more was that Luke was already awake and watching her sleep. Did I hit you in my sleep? Nadia asked, worried about her bad habits. Luke stood up from the bed, wincing as he did. No, it's fine, he assured her, though a sharp pain in his chest suggested otherwise. Nadia's mind began to race with concerns, but Luke's thoughts were elsewhere. He hadn't been able to sleep, not because of Nadia's habits, but because he had to fight so hard to resist touching her. I must go now, wife, Luke said, letting her know they wouldn't have breakfast together. Nadia, thinking she had caused him to be late for work, assured him they'd meet again later. As Luke left the room, he thought about the real reason he couldn't sleep. Nadia didn't know that he was awake last night when she had kissed his forehead. It wasn't their first kiss, but he still had to hold himself back to avoid touching her. Despite the struggle, he was happy as long as she was happy. He wondered if he'd have to live like this forever. I need to talk to Jade, he thought. Meanwhile, downstairs, a maid asked Nadia, did you like the food, Duchess? As Nadia finished her breakfast, the maid informed her that the butler and the commander of the knights wanted to visit her today. The maid, concerned, asked if their visit bothered Nadia, but Nadia had decided not to judge people by their appearances. Sometimes scary people were actually sweet. As Anna, another maid, prepared to leave, she asked about the time. Nadia noticed a clock on the wall, something she hadn't seen before. Moving closer, she also saw a picture. Curious, she called to Anna, wanting to know more about it. Anna was surprised that Nadia hadn't noticed it before. I, I'm going to get some fresh air, Nadia stuttered. Anna volunteered to show her a piece of art and they left the room together. Nadia was embarrassed by the art at first glance. Anna explained its history, saying she had gotten it because it was popular. Handing Nadia a rope connected to the statue, Anna urged her to pull it. Nadia felt mortified and stepped away from the statue. Anna wondered if she had gone too far. Meanwhile, Misa thought about how much the statue reminded her of Luke and another woman. Anna noticed and told her to focus on other things, suggesting they prepare some dessert in the kitchen. While making dessert, Nadia couldn't stop thinking about what she had seen. Even the chocolate bar she was making reminded her of Luke's body. She wondered if the maids had done it on purpose. After a while, the maids came to check on her. We heard the sculpture of the life of the Countess has just arrived, so we were about to go see it, one of them said. 
The book's name sounded familiar to Nadia. It was the one her sister Ilya used to read every day. Remembering that her sister had refused to let her read it, Nadia asked the maids if she could borrow it. They were skeptical, worried she might faint because of its content. Their discussion was interrupted by Anna, who announced the arrival of the captain of the knights and the butler. Anna took Nadia to her room to get her ready to meet them. Before the wedding, Staten Castle had been fully prepared to not seem poor and rustic to the new duchess from the capital. Commenting on the dress Anna had given her, Nadia asked if she could always have such beautiful clothes, as she was used to wearing them only occasionally. Just then, Luke arrived to escort her. Hearing his voice reminded Nadia of the picture she had seen earlier, and she refused to face him. Having no choice, she turned around. Luke was awestruck when he saw her. You look gorgeous, Nadia, so beautiful that I can't stop looking at you, he said, staring at her intently. Reaching out, he asked to hold her hands, but Nadia, still uneasy from earlier events, moved away, using their lateness as an excuse to avoid him. It was clear she hadn't calmed down from everything that had happened that day. Luke was worried that Nadia was avoiding him. So many thoughts raced through his mind. He began to wonder what might have made her avoid him. He thought about the sleeping incident but dismissed it. It couldn't be that. Then he wondered if she had any idea about his feelings for her. Meanwhile, Nadia wasn't happy about being cold towards Luke. She had wanted to hug him when he complimented her, but she couldn't because of the troubling thoughts in her mind. Every time she looked at his face, she remembered the clock and the statue. She was really confused, especially now that she was dressed so beautifully. It made her nervous because she kept remembering bad things, like the fear she felt during her wedding or the time she fought with her friend over wearing the same dress to her friend's birthday party. Wife, Luke's voice interrupted her thoughts. He asked if she was all right, noticing she didn't look well. Thinking it was because of the guests they were about to meet, he assured her that just like him, everyone else would like her. As they got closer to the room where the guests were gathered, Nadia's nervousness increased. She wondered how she was going to introduce herself. The first person she noticed was the commander of knights, Gary. He looked less scary and more handsome than she had expected. As she went further into the room, she saw two more people. Grant Jones, the butler of Staten Castle, whom she had met before, and Jade. It's good to see everyone, Anna made her presence known, urging them to try the dessert on the table. The dessert was the cookies Nadia had made. None of us like sweet things, the commander said, unaware that Nadia had made them. When he heard that the Duchess had taken her time to prepare them, he had no choice but to accept. The look on Luke's face alone was enough to make him eat the cookies, as Nadia was already feeling down that she had made something they didn't like. Luke thanked Nadia for the cookies. Your cookies are adorable, he said, trying to lighten her mood. Nadia was not consoled. In fact, seeing them eat the cookies made her more sad because she knew they didn't like them, but ate them out of politeness. When Luke turned to Nadia, he noticed she was on the verge of tears, which made him unhappy. He blamed Gary for making her sad, but Nadia wasn't necessarily sad because of what Gary said. She was happy they were trying so hard to be nice to her. Despite Staten Castle being unfamiliar, the people were kind and welcoming. Luke decided to take her to a quieter place for her to calm down, a place where it would be just the two of them. Have you calmed down a bit? Luke asked Nadia as they were now alone. He told her not to worry about what happened at tea time. Apologizing to Nadia made her mind return to the statue again. She thought of how sweet Luke was and rebuked herself for what she felt towards him. Still thinking about him, Luke held her by the waist and lifted her up, apologizing for doing so, but he wanted to compensate her for a job well done. Nadia, for some reason, felt bad for Luke. She thanked him for his compliment and apologized. Luke was confused about why she apologized and wondered what he should do to comfort her. Nadia was crying and he didn't know how to calm her. He had only seen people cry out of fear of him, but he had never comforted anyone before. He didn't want to do something wrong and hurt her more. Sorry, I ruined it, Nadia apologized through her tears. Everything's fine, Luke assured her as he came closer. It's too close, Nadia thought, planning to change the subject. Before she could try, Luke told her he had a gift for her. She was surprised, but sure, it would be a good gift, one she would like as long as it came from him. Luke realized he couldn't stop himself from kissing Nadia if they stayed this close, so he suggested they change into something more comfortable. 
As the maids helped Nadia out of her previous attire, they asked if she liked the people who assisted the Duke. Yes, they seemed really sweet, Nadia responded. She then requested from Anna that she would like to learn more about Staten now that she would live there for the rest of her life so things wouldn't be difficult for her. I think it's a good idea, ma'am, Anna said, informing her that she had prepared a gift for her. She handed Nadia a book, The Life of the Countess, and suggested she read it for now while they found more books for her to study. Nadia was excited to have the book, wondering how it would be since it was just for adults. Luke's voice interrupted their conversation. He asked to come in wanting to escort Nadia himself. The riding clothes look good on my wife, he commented when he saw her. They were going horseback riding since the maids had told him Nadia enjoyed it. Pointing to a direction, Luke told her to look. She saw a white horse. It was the gift Luke had gotten for her. Jade then suggested they go on a stroll, and Luke asked for his own horse. But Jade insisted they should ride together on the same horse for safety reasons. As they strolled out, Luke asked Nadia if she was comfortable. Nadia was thrilled. At least she could ride here. There had been many times she wanted to ride in the capital, but her parents didn't let her, saying it was not safe. Being able to run like this had always been a dream for Nadia, and she was grateful to Luke for making it come true. As they continued their stroll, Luke apologized for the way he had married her. Even though she had accepted the proposal, he knew she had to unexpectedly leave her family and friends to be with him. He apologized for using his status and family name, explaining that he didn't know what else to do since he had fallen in love with her at first sight. Nadia was stunned. She had to ask again, Do you love me? But a more pressing question followed. Did we meet before? Yes, Luke replied, reminding her of a time they had met, though he knew she wouldn't remember. He wasn't going to tell Nadia he was the homeless person she had tried to save from a pack. He wasn't going to say that even if he died. Nadia wanted to know where they had met first, but Luke evaded the question. He returned to apologizing for forcing her to get married. Well, I was surprised at first, Nadia confessed. She hadn't known what kind of person he was then. The place was big and unfamiliar, and she had gotten sick upon arrival at the castle. For Nadia, falling sick was the turning point. She had thought she had no one on her side, but it was a relief that Luke was there. She felt grateful to him. Even though the process was surprising and scary, she was happy now. I feel lucky to have met you because you're a sweet and kind soul, she said, looking at him. At first, she never imagined Luke would be like this. When she received the mysterious wedding proposal from the Duke called Beast, it was no different from being sold. She had been afraid of strangers, which made her stay away from Luke. But as she spent time with him, she came to know that the Duke of Staten was actually a good person who loved her, which was why he proposed. Now, she wondered if she ever liked Luke. The mood between them grew intense as they got closer. Luke suggested they go back, as it was already late and almost time for dinner. He thought about his feelings for Nadia. If she came to him first, he wouldn't avoid it. However, if things continued like this, he knew his feelings would eventually show. As he kept thinking, he thought of Jade, who had put him in this position in the first place. Jade, he bellowed as they returned to the mansion, heading towards his office. Jade, expecting this, hid behind the desk, trying to calm the Duke down. He explained he didn't want any trouble and just wanted to be helpful. Enough, Luke stopped him from rambling. He didn't have the energy to be angry at Jade at the moment, but the stroll was a success, except Nadia thought he was kind, which was not what he expected. She didn't blame him. She just said he was kind and nice, which he felt he wasn't. Anger filled his face as he told Jade all this. He decided he would get rid of his lower part, stretching his hand for scissors. Your Excellency, you can't, Jade exclaimed, reaching to stop him. Are you planning to cut the line here? He reminded Luke that Nadia wouldn't want to see him hurt. He urged Luke to train a little, saying it might help clear his mind by spending time outside. You will return as a person with a healthy body and mind he said. Thinking about it, Luke realized it was time to leave for training in the mountains. It was a difficult and long journey, but if it would help him not hurt Nadia, he would take it. Applauding Jade for the brilliant idea, he wanted to know when he could start if he prepared now. At that moment in the bedroom of the state mansion, Nadia had prepared herself to read the book. Holding it in her hands, she was excited. She hadn't expected to be reading her favorite book. She loved horseback riding more than reading, but she always admired her older sister, who enjoyed her free time reading books. 
Reading the book took her mind back to her family, reminding her that she needed to write them a letter to update them on life at the castle, especially the fact that Luke was nice. As Nadia continued reading the book, the content became increasingly strange. She was deep in thought when a maid called out, Duchess, let me help you get ready for bed. Receiving no response, the maid opened the door and was surprised to see Nadia sprawled on the bed. Thinking she had fainted, the maid exclaimed loudly, startling Nadia, who explained she was just feeling dizzy. Nadia wondered if adult novels were truly about couples lying in bed and sleeping in each other's arms. She decided to ask the maid some questions about marriage and intimacy. She wanted to know what they thought about marrying someone pure and how one might approach intimacy. The maid's responses made Nadia feel ashamed of herself. As she continued reading, she realized that she and Luke had never really been a couple in the traditional sense. Determined to change that, she asked the maids for detailed advice on how to be more active and intimate with Luke. The maids dressed her in a romantic nightdress, assuring her it would catch Luke's attention. As she waited for Luke, she replayed all the maids' advice in her mind, feeling increasingly nervous and anxious. She waited for him all night until she fell asleep. The next morning, Nadia woke up and went out to look for Luke. Good morning, my lady, Anna greeted her as she stepped out of her room. Nadia asked about Luke and learned that he had gone to the mountains for training. Mountain training, she thought, recalling its notoriously difficult reputation. Anna reassured her that the rumors were exaggerated and that Luke would be fine, but Nadia couldn't understand why he had left without a word. Anna informed her that he would be back no later than the day after tomorrow. Nadia saw this as an opportunity to prepare a surprise for Luke. However, three days passed and Luke had not returned. Nadia, frustrated and anxious, had been waiting up for him each night. She practiced every night, trying to perfect her surprise. As she looked out the window, she heard footsteps and saw the knights returning to the castle. She ran down to meet them and found that Luke was not with them. Jay, one of the knights, explained that Luke had gone to help some knights caught in the rain in the mountains and had slipped and fallen off a cliff. Jay assured her that Luke was familiar with the training grounds and would be fine. Nadia was worried but determined to stay strong. She asked if there was a search party, and the knights confirmed there was. She wanted to join them but felt she would only get in the way. The maid, seeing her concern, suggested she could be of great help if she went along, as she was a skilled horse rider, and her presence would give Luke strength. Determined to help, Nadia approached Jade and informed him of her desire to join the search party. Jade initially refused, but the maids pulled him aside and explained that the tension had been exaggerated and that the Duke was likely already near the manor. They also mentioned Nadia's preparations to make a move and how important it was for her to reunite with Luke. Moved by their words, Jade agreed to let Nadia join them. Nadia changed into comfortable riding clothes and the knights, though unhappy about pretending to search, set out with her. They told her they had to take a discreet route to avoid spreading rumors about the Duke's absence, which could cause chaos given the lack of an heir or relative for the House of Staten. This strengthened Nadia's resolve to protect Luke. As they rode, Nadia's horse suddenly stopped. She noticed something in the bushes and went closer to investigate. She found a shining object on the ground, Luke's button. Alerting the others, Jade was surprised but realized that Luke might have taken a wrong turn due to the rain. If the button was here, Luke should be close by. With renewed determination, they continued their search, hoping to find Luke soon. Jade instructed the knights to go deeper into the forest, suspecting that the Duke might be in more trouble than they initially thought. As they advanced, evening approached, and they realized they could not continue due to the increasing danger, especially with the Duchess present. They found themselves in an abandoned area where moving further might lead to encounters with the Eames, a notorious family. Deciding to turn back for reinforcements, they planned to contact the nearest order of knights for assistance. As they discussed their return, Nadia noticed movement in the trees and drew their attention to it, but before they could react, they were ambushed by the Eames. The knights formed a protective circle around Nadia as they fought off the attackers. The Eames, recognizing the strength of the knights, targeted specific individuals while leaving Nadia unharmed. Amid the chaos, Nadia's horse, startled by the commotion, bolted deeper into the forest. After a while, the horse stopped and Nadia faced a decision go back to Gray and Jay or continue searching for Luke. 
She chose to continue feeling like a burden during the fight. Looking for a place to rest, Nadia spotted a cave with a fire lit inside. Despite her fears, she decided to investigate. Approaching the cave, she noticed a trail of blood and was shocked to find Luke inside, injured and resting. He was covered in blood, and the sight filled her with both relief and fear. On the day Luke went missing, the heavy rain had caused chaos as they returned from training. Luke had gone back to save a rookie knight, sacrificing himself by falling off a cliff in the process. Though he managed to save the rookie, he found himself lost in the forest with the rain worsening his situation. Despite the pain and exhaustion, his thoughts were on Nadia, worrying about her being alone. As Luke sat in the cave, he thought he heard Nadia's voice calling his name. He initially dismissed it as a dream, but when he saw her, he embraced her tightly, apologizing for making her worry. I miss you, he said, holding her close. I miss you too, Nadia replied, her embrace becoming tighter. Luke, astonished that Nadia was really there, asked to confirm her presence. She assured him it was indeed her. Anger surged within Luke, knowing that the knights he trusted had brought Nadia into this dangerous situation. Nadia quickly explained that it was her decision to join the search party and that the knights had done their best to protect her during the attack, but her horse had bolted. Seeing her concern for the knights, Luke promised they would search for them at dawn. As they prepared to rest, Nadia asked if she could take off her soaked riding clothes. Without thinking, Luke agreed. When he realized she was also taking off her undergarments, he offered to go outside to gather more wood for the fire, but Nadia stopped him, asking him to hold her close instead. As they sat together, Nadia noticed Luke's clothes were also wet and suggested he take off his jacket. Seeing his injuries, she was distressed. Luke explained he got hurt, saving a rookie knight, considering it a stroke of good fortune. Nadia, tears streaming down her face, couldn't understand how he could call getting injured good fortune. I worry about you, she said, because you're not a beast, but my husband. She reached up and kissed Luke, catching him off guard. And this is where this part of the story ends. If you want the next part, please comment the name Nadia. See you in the next one.